Welcome to worship. It's good to be worshiping God with you. I am Pastor Liz from our Savior's Lutheran Church. Pastor Jeff from Concordia Lutheran Church. We trust God is with us. The kingdom of heaven is like a tiny mustard seed that carries the life of a tree. The kingdom of heaven is like a tiny portion of yeast that makes bread rise. The kingdom of heaven is like a tiny pearl of great price that we would give all our stuff to have. The kingdom of heaven is like a fishing boat filled with catch, good and bad, together with fisherfolk wise to recognize the good. Holy One, you call us to find your kingdom already hidden in our world. In tiny, transforming possibilities, in beauty that calls us to surrender all, in complicated choices that call for wisdom. Reveal yourself here in this moment, and heighten our senses that we may find you, and join you in building this kingdom of love and hope and peace. In the name of the one who calls us to seek, Jesus the Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom, that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from First Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall rise after you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 119. Your decrees are wonderful. Therefore, I obey them with all my heart. When your word is opened, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me as you always do to those who love your name. 
Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shred streams of tears because people do not keep your teaching. A reading from Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. For those whom God foreknew, God also predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom God predestined, God also called. And those whom God called, God also justified. And those whom God justified, God also glorified. What then are we to say about all these things? If God is for us, who is against us? God, who did not withhold God's own Son, but gave him up for all of us, will this God not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be with at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you st understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, Pastor Jeff, we have come to our readings and our reflection and sermon time. What are you thinking today? 
Well, I've been spending time with uh, Romans for these summer weeks. And as I reflected on uh, the Romans text uh, for today, I've um, been thinking about a lot of the reading that we have been doing um, in light of the murders of Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, um, readings in anti-racism. Um, we see it as part of our call to follow Jesus, um, to be people of confession, people of honesty, and people of transformation. And so it's important work to be doing for ourselves as individuals, but also our churches and institutions, uh, so that we can have the kind of world that, like some of our opening words at worship today talk about, a kingdom, uh, a, a kind of world where we are all kin to one another. So what I've been thinking about in that anti-racism work, I've been reading uh, a bit from Ibram Kendi's Stamped from the Beginning, uh, which is more of a history book. And so uh, he's talking about the history of racist ideas. And as he does that, he talks about how um, racist, racist ideas don't come from uh, hatred of somebody or fear of somebody. Racist ideas are generated uh, from the need to justify something. So, for instance, you know, the Portuguese want to kidnap some people and use them for free labor. Uh, then they develop a bunch of ideas about how we are superior, they are inferior. Actually, we're really helping them out by enslaving them and, and things like that. And they're, they're not as smart as we are. And, and, and so then it begins these, these ideas about superiority and inferiority um, in order to justify the, the evil that they want to do. Um, he also talks about then how that, that kind of gets out of control because it's not just that initial lie about somebody that is told and believed. It's, it's really believed in full as it's perpetuated in prejudices and policies that are passed down generation after generation after generation. Um, and it's believed by the people who want that lie to be believed and even the people about which the lie is told begin to interiorize it and then believe, man, I, I'm inferior. They're superior. They're better than me. I'm worse than them. Um, and it just causes a bunch of pain and suffering because all sides are all of a sudden believing, believing this. He, he talks briefly about, um, even further back in history, he, he doesn't spend a lot of time on it, but... Um, the Greeks had this sort of way of dealing with other people as well, that we're superior to them. They're barbarians. That word actually means they don't speak Greek, so they're not as enlightened and awesome as we are as Greek people. Um, and then he, he goes from there to talk a little bit about, well, the Romans also co-opted that Greek way of dividing people up, mm -hmm. inferior, uh, superior, and all the reasons why all these other nations and the peoples of them are not as good as we amazing, awesome, cultured Romans. And so when we come to this letter from Paul to the Romans, he is addressing a community of Jesus followers who have spent their whole lives as people thinking that, well, we're superior to those people or we're not as good as those people. And so think about that when it comes to these powerful words that we hear this morning that we know that all things work together for good, for those that love God, that God foreknew some of you as God's children, God predestined some of you as God's children, God calls you, God justifies you, God glorifies you, and nothing, none of these natural forces, none of these political forces, anything can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Think of the good news of that for people who are always being sorted out and separated, like good fish and bad fish from our gospel reading. People who have believed the Roman ideological claims on their life that they're not valuable unless they're this way, that way, and the other way. People who are hearing the message of these traveling kind of other missionaries who are saying, wait, you're not good as Gentile people. You need to become this or that. Paul breaks through all of that to these people who are suffering under the weight of being told that they're, they're really nothing. Um, freeing them by telling them they're more than conquerors through Christ. Nothing can separate them. God isn't some Caesar who's trying to get you all to compete for my favor. 
God actually gives God's own life for you. You are loved and wanted and valuable so much so that God put in the forethought to, to plan out that you are among God's children. Um, no matter who you are or where you're from, you are God's children. I think it's really interesting. Um, as you're speaking, I'm relating it to a lot of what my, my MBA class with Saints class goes, leadership and change. And, and their focus, I think, is a lot on a teacher um, called Gervais Bush who writes about transformational change being um, <clears throat> directed by... by <clears throat> directed by changing sh narratives, like creating his, he's all about creating generative images and generative narratives mm. that, that form the way you think about the world and organization, um, but, and your action. And it's really interesting, um, you know, hearing about Dr. Kendi's work of, you know, these narratives, these, um, that became embedded within both the oppressor and the oppressed that help to explain why things are the way they mm -hmm. are and to help her perpetuate that system. And, and like in the, the class I'm, classes I've been doing, it's about, you know, changing the narrative in order, order to change the action. And I think, you know, that's what um, Kendi's maybe working on. And of course it's what Paul's working on. He's working on bringing in a new narrative um, so people can re-understand how they can live in the world, how they can live in, in a society that has different, um, competing narratives mm -hmm. about the world and, and who to be. And, and he brings in these kind of um, generative images with the, the conquerors, you know, what it, helping people reframe. You know, they know what conquerors are, especially, you know, the Jewish people from whom, um, you know, Paul's ministry kind of began and Jesus' ministry kind of began. They are people who are conquered over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And to reclaim that language to say, yeah, Rome maybe is in charge politically, but we have a different kind of um, power and a different kind of status and a different kind of um, importance because God has claimed us and declared that, that even though we might be <laughs> ground down in a lot of ways in the, our lives, that Jesus raises us up mm -hmm. and that 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 being raised up with Jesus is what matters more than anything else. We are all storied in one way or another. You know, the story, we each live our life as a, a character in a story, and sometimes it's a story that's kind of given to us, and sometimes it's a story that we have to, to claim for ourselves. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about, is the dynamic Paul is doing. He's giving these people a new story, a better story to live their lives to than the story of um, that they've been given by their by the Romans. Of course, some of them in the community are probably Roman people. And so the, the story that they've come to believe is we're better than all these people. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just people who have been, um, as the words of Paul say, for your sake we're being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. It's not just the slaughtered people gathered together in community. It's some of the people who have taken the good news of Jesus to heart who have themselves been the slaughterers um, in that community and in that society. They're coming together in a new community because of a better story. That something about the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection calls to them and claims them out of those stories that would have them divide each other up in, in so many harmful and destructive ways. And... It, it makes me think with, with your work for your MBA, um, there's so many stories that our, our churches are living out too. And you know, we've been reading some Lenny Duncan as well, who talks about, well, our church is, you know, convinced of the story of, of decline. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, where all of our churches are, are falling apart. Um, they're dwindling. Oh yeah, this book, Dear Church. Um, this is, this is book, book club day <laughs> here, here in the sermon. <laughs> well, there's another one. I was looking for this one earlier. But oh, I'll okay. let you continue. Um, that he he tries to give us a different narrative that all the changes the church is going through is breaking us open to a new future with new possibilities, with new and perhaps better ways of being faithful that are more true to the story of Jesus' love for the world that we find ourselves in. 
Yeah, I think it's really interesting that you're talking about Paul preaching to communities that are starting to form of mixed groups, and how do we do that? And I think um, Pastor Duncan, you know, his book is talking about the ELCA as the whitest denomination in the U.S., um, and, you know, that kind of conversation um, points to that we haven't been able to embrace um, diversity and different racial backgrounds and different, um, you know, I would argue um, beyond the race issue, just, just socioeconomic and yeah. and even um, political, you know, we're just, we have a really hard time being together with people who are different. Um, and I was looking for this one earlier. We just finished Patch Strix in, <laughs> um, in book club, book study, whatever, yesterday. Uh, and at the end, she's talking about her community um, all of a sudden... You know, they're a community of kind of outcasts and people in addiction and people who have been, you know, kind of burned by the church and just kind of a little more edgy. And all of a sudden she gets these soccer moms starting to show up um, who want to be a part of what they're doing. Hmm. And um, she, Pastor Nadia talks a little bit about being a little like, you know, we don't want to be that kind of, you know, we don't want to lose our kind of edginess. Hmm. Um, but by the end, she comes to realize like, well, it's not this is the work of the spirit that brings us together and, and looking around her community and seeing just the variety of, of lives who are all being brought around this message of Jesus. And in, in discovering this new narrative of Christ, discovering each other too, and, and finding room to be in community together in all their diversity, recognizing that they come from different things and places and yet sharing life and sharing love mm. together. And as we read that, you know, I think our book club kind of talked a little bit about, wow, like how was she able to foster that kind of community? Because it's it's so hard for us. You know, who will separate us from the love of Christ? It's easy for us to intellectualize that and be like, yeah, of course Jesus loves everybody. Yeah, man. Yeah. But we live that separation so much, um, mm -hmm. even within our churches. And that's why the some of these parables that we hear today are powerful as well. Because what these parables, when the parables talk about the kingdom from heaven, it's trying to break open in a way those of us who are used to so many different kingdoms in the way that they're organized. That the kingdom that Jesus is bringing is so different than the way of life that we know. That just like for the example you shared from Pastor Nadia, that when we experience that, uh, oh, something new is happening. We can sometimes be like, well, maybe that's not quite what we want. But then coming to realize that, well, what if this is the work of the Spirit among us? What if these, um, you know, certain members of Gentile nations and Jewish people and even Roman oppressors gathering together in community is what God is doing? Um, getting rid of anything that would separate because nothing separates us in Christ Jesus. What if the soccer moms... And, uh, you know, edgy, uh, the, the trans people in her community and uh, the others who have been imprisoned uh, and addicts. What if all together that is the work of the Spirit um, creating what we've been calling the kingdom of God, this new community where everybody um, is valued and cared for? Yeah, what a church that would be. Well, that's the church you are part of, people of God. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You are people who God is working among to create this kind of kingdom, this kind of kingdom. Whether, however you've been storied, God gives you this story as your identity and who you are and who you are becoming. That God has predestined, justified, and will glorify you together with all the people that God claims from this world with this wonderful story of Jesus' life given for you.
find the hints of the kingdom in our world and to nurture its growth among us. We will use our gifts, tithes, and offerings to rebuild the body of Christ. Let us pray. Grow these gifts in your love. Bless our offerings, our hearts, and our hopes in your love. Make us worthy of your work for your kingdom from heaven. Fill these gifts and each of us with your goodness. Amen. And now the prayers of intercession. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things. A mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. In this time, help us to recognize your presence as we worship in ways that are marked by our care for our neighbor and caution in spreading the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers. Treasuring the earth, may we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Your spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick, especially those on our parish prayer list. Members Sharon, Bob, Burl, Dwayne and Carol, Kate, Rosemary, Pam, and Heather. Those in care facilities, Thurley, Bob, Pat, Bill, Bev, Isabel, Wesley, and Betty. And family and friends of the congregation, Janet, Michelle, Todd, Drayden, Doug, Craig, Kaysen, Dick, Ron, Karen, and Dale. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this congregation ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and places. Embolden our witness now and one day gather us with all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.